did you find the name of the Okay, perdón. Hola, estoy atrasada. I am late. I am so sorry. I, my 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 mother-in-law is getting ready for a hurricane coming. So <laughs> the call was a little fraught this morning with <laughs> oh. oh, getting ready for a hurricane. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe she'll move to Arizona. Oh, uh, I I tried to encourage that years and years ago when my kids were little. And uh for reasons I don't understand, my father-in-law said, it's too hot. So where does he wind up in Florida? It's too hot and it costs too much to fly down there. It's like, now he lives in Florida and he doesn't like it. <laughs> he doesn't like Florida either. <laughs> he would rather be where it's cold. Okay. One of the S. <laughs> Espero que ustedes estén bien. I hope you guys are well. Uh, okay. Uh, vamos a practicar. We're going to practice with a bunch of stuff. I found some fun stories. Um, I want to open first and see if you've got any question from some uh, any questions about something I had sent. Ah. Uh. Ah. Remember this little thing. Our. Uh, sí. ooh, Ricitos de oro. Ricitos de oro means little curls of gold, which is their way of saying Goldilocks. Uh, Rizo, R-I-Z-O, is a curl, like in a strand of hair. So ricitos means little curls. Uh, so the nice thing about this was that it gave you reasons in the little big, or in the big box for why something was correct uh, or not, right? But, uh, so- Most of these seemed obvious, but I did have questions on a few, but I didn't have paper why I wanted when to I open with that. Okay, quite, Perfect. which one? I didn't have my paper with me, so I was watching it somewhere else sorry okay. reading should it. we should we just do a quick click on various parts at least part of the way through or would you recognize it if you saw it uh i think this first page was pretty easy okay yeah oh Tres how about ojos that last one no okay uh, it was a pretty day in the summer and it was sunny i thought i guess that's that was hus Hasia, right? It was sunny. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've got to look for a weather thing, yeah? It's, okay. right, it's at the bottom of the first section. Oh, aquí. Ah, sí. Ah, 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 ah. Y hacia sol. Hacia sol. In general, well, you know, okay. If you look at a rule page on Preterite and Perfect, there are always dangers <laughs> hidden in those rules. Uh, they'll tell you that weather tends to be imperfect, which is usually true. If you're just describing what the weather was like on a specific day in the past, most of that is description of weather, and therefore most of that will be imperfecto. So, hacia sol, Hacia sol is what you want to say. It was sunny. Um, but some weather events will be preterito. So things that happen, weather events that are sudden will not be imperfecto. So an example of that would be... Uh, the hurricane. Empe ah, ah, sí. Empezó, em empezaron los vientos del huracán. The, the hurricane wind started. You know, whenever you're talking about the start of a weather event, yeah, like it started to rain uh, or, you know, the rain finished up, then that will go to preterito. But when we just okay. want to say simple descriptions, and that's always the clue. If it's a description, it's imperfecto so it was sunny it was cool it was hot okay uh yeah it uh it was rainy well that's still description right but it started to rain that talks about the beginning of an event 
And whenever we talk about the beginning of a weather event or the end of a weather event, yeah. Uh, okay. Then we're going to have to shift that into preterito. Does that help a little bit? It does. It does. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, that that can be, you know, I mean, that's very, it is, it is quite challenging. Um, and it's quite challenging. You, you, the more you read things, the more you see examples and the more you hear things, you hear more examples. Um, any other questions on that story? But, you know, there's some things you should notice, like if you want to say, for ejemplo, something like, you know, really most of the time when you say there were, there were three bowls, there were three chairs, there were three beds, it always winds up being había, you know. The times when you use hubo are quite limited. Hubo is quite limited usually to events. You know, hubo una reunión, there was a meeting because the meeting happened. You know, chairs didn't happen. If I'm saying there were cars on the street, the cars didn't happen. Uh, uh, an accident, that's an event. Yeah, A fire that breaks out, that's an event. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a meeting, a wedding, something that happens, anything event-oriented, could use ubo, but the percentage of times you use ubo is much smaller compared to the amount of times you're going to use aria. Because most of the times when we say there was or there were, we're describing something. I remember now, in somewhere in here, there's a pair in a sentence, and it said it depended on if I chose the imperfecto for the first one, I had to choose. I was confused on that and now I don't remember what pair in oh, that sentence it was. I think Did anybody there, else remember I, that? Yeah, I think there were a couple where uh you could choose one or the other, but the meaning changed, right? Yeah. And yes. I think I and I'm trying to remember which ones that it was. It might be on the next lines. Let's see. Uh, ba, 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 ba. I think it was in the first paragraph because I didn't get beyond that. So and I remember oh, seeing that. You Did remember you seeing that? Yep. Maybe it was. Uh, some in the first paragraph. And I'm trying to remember exactly because. Oh. Ah, se no. Okay. I'm I am the case Adam? Was it that? Maybe that's ah, what it was. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's maybe. A... Ah, okay. Okay. Let's look at this. Uh, so the sentence starts with entonces then bebé oso y mamá osa quisieron comer la sopa. It tells us the two were possible. Uh, uh, but then, okay, we have to pair them up in a certain way. You're right. So quisieron uh, comer la sopa, pero no pudieron. They tried, oh, quisieron gets a very special meaning in preterito. It's one of the small clump of verbs that actually changes meaning. Querer gets one meaning in preterito, but a different meaning in imperfecto. The imperfecto meaning of querer so your quería, queríamos, querían verbs, the imperfectos, those mean wanted or didn't want. Boom. Uh, but uh, quisieron comer will shift the meaning into tried to eat the soup, but couldn't do that. They didn't manage to do it. Uh, whereas querían comer la sopa, would mean they wanted to, but they were not able to because it was so hot. So that's why there are a few things in these examples where they say, well, either or, but then the meaning of your sentence changes. Um, those are pretty sophisticated 
I'm going to say. So, okay. Um, with querer, I would say don't overstress it. Most of the time, when you are going to want to use querer, most of the time you use it in conversation to say wanted or didn't want. It's going to be imperfecto most of the time, right? Preterito, mm -hmm. preterite of querer with no changes the meaning to refused. Most of the time when you're using querer, uh, speaking in conversation, you just want to say wanted or didn't want. Queríamos ir al mercado. We wanted to go to the market. Queríamos ir um, a Chandler. We wanted to go to Chandler, right? Uh, no queríamos manejar. We didn't want to drive. Most of the time when we use querer in conversation, we want imperfecto. It gets a very narrow meaning and, and it gets one meaning and with a no, 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 uh, uh, no quisieron, they refused. That's a very narrow meaning. It's something you're not going to use a lot. So it's, it's good to know the, have your own. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, Poder. So poder in preterite gets a very specific meaning. Poder in preterite, uh, when they say no pudieron, it means they didn't manage to get it done. It talks about whether or not that event was actually able to be carried out, whether that action, they were able to carry it out. Uh, okay. Uh, Pudieron, pudieron manejar. They could drive in the sense that they managed to actually do it. Podían manejar is quite different. Podían manejar means they could drive, they were able to drive, but it only talks about they had the ability to do that skill of driving. Okay. No, po, uh, no, no pudieron manejar, they couldn't drive, they didn't manage to drive. Ooh, something was wrong with the car and it wouldn't start. The road was blocked, so they couldn't, they literally could not uh, uh, mm. do that action of driving. But it doesn't talk, uh, but no pudieron manejar they couldn't drive doesn't talk about the ability to drive. It just talks about something prevented them from doing that action of manejar. Okay, something wrong with the car, the road blocked, something that they didn't do that activity at all of manejar. But no podían manejar, they couldn't drive in the sense of they were not able, they did not have that ability. Maybe they didn't know how to do it. Maybe they had never practiced, something like that. That one is a, it's a real nuance. It's very tough. Poder and querer in pretérito really change your meaning. Most of the time for average conversation, you're going to want poder in imperfecto. Most average conversation, you're going to want querer in imperfecto for the majority of the things we want to say. Thanks. And those are almost, I feel like I'm nitpicking when I'm saying that, but they are. They're very, preterite is very, has a very narrow interpretation for poder. It means the action didn't even happen. The action is paired up with poder. All right. Um, okay. I must. Is there are there any other questions on things you didn't get from this? No. Nada. Bien. Okay. Bien. Vale. Bueno. Okay. Um, vamos a practicar. Let's do some practice. Oh, let's see if you can plug in some simple ideas before we do our picture pages. Uh, we're gonna do some 
easy warm-up fill in the blank kind of stuff so let's see if you can get these and these are kind of everyday kind of examples i believe did i look at all of them no way okay como se dice i went to the park yesterday we need a form of ir fue fue it won't be fue because fue talks about somebody else. Oh, fui. 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 Fui al parque ayer. Fui al parque ayer. I went. Fui. Okay. Ir in pretérito. Ir in pretérito is what 80% of the time you're probably going to be using. 80% of the time that you in just average chit chat are using ir you're probably going to want pretérito with that verb because most of the time we're just saying went. I can you I can use iba in conversation, but most of the time then it's going to talk about a repeated used to go. And most of the time in our daily conversation, we wind up using ir in pretérito more. It's just the more common use. Okay. That's not to say we don't use imperfecto. It's just the more common. Okay. Discovered. Descubrir is to discover. Descubrir. Literally to uncover. Descubrir. Discover. Los españoles. Descubrió. Descubrieron. Descubrieron, Descubrieron América en... 1492, 1492, los españoles descubrieron, uh, uh, it's got to be pretérito because we got 1492, <laughs> yeah, it's a specific time slot, so we need pretérito, okay, de niño, as a kid, you I used to play, jugaba. ah, jugaba, jugaba. sí, and notice how fast that one came out because it's the used to, used to, used to, jugaba. Jugaba a videojuegos, and you've already used that a bunch of times. See, the more you use something, the more that plants, it becomes a little earworm. I've heard that before, you say, and that just comes out, jugaba. A videojuegos son los días. I used to play video games every day. Ah, mi abuelo. My era. grandpa was fun. Ooh, era. We, era. era, bien. And notice how, see, some see some of these we wind up using a lot and they come faster. You've heard those examples before. Okay, we ate. Comemos. 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 Mm -hmm. And Comemos. later we went to the beach. Ir. Event. We must. Bien. Bien. Okay. First, he lived in Denmark and then in Spain. Oh, we're talking about a sequence. First in this place, then, ooh, this one's a little more challenge. Bibir. Yeah. Bibir. Bibi? Uh, bibi. El, we want vivio. El, el, he. Vivio. 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 Now, why not Bibia? Hmm. Well, you said it was a sequence. Yes, there's yeah, a sequence. It's a sequence. There's a time element first. Really? Yeah, the time element. Okay. I'm going to say most of the time, if you just want to say, oh, he lived in such and such a neighborhood. Okay. Oh, he lived near downtown. Uh, vivía cerca del centro. He lived near the downtown area. Vivía cerca del centro. Okay. Probably vivía. Right? But because of the time element, because I am pegging it as first one place and later one place, that starts to peg it in time. It's this primero and después that starts to narrow it because we're using time to narrow it. We're using a sequence. 
uh, you know, first lived in this place, then lived in that place. And you know that that one first place is over. Yeah. So BBO. Okay. Oh, you worked for 25 years. At Trabajabas. Trabajaste. Oh. Ah. ¿Por qué? Oh. ¿Por qué trabajaste? Why trabajaste? Why preterito? You said it's over. It's 25 years. I got a definite hmm. specific. Oh. A definite slot of time i can put that 25 years in a box and it's a nice little neat compact it fits in a 25 year thing when i peg it in time that i say it's only for this number of years it's going to go into preterito and this one is quite it's a very definite marker when i limit something to a certain number of years then i need preterito Trabajaste. Uh, and don't let me forget, we're going to come back to Trabajaste after we finish this last one. Oh, oh, she married twice. She got married twice. Casarse is to get married. Casarse? Oh. Casarse. So ella se. Casarse. 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 Okay. No, cost, cost. Well, she used to get married or she got married this many times. Oh. Am I limited? How am I limiting? Am I saying she used to get married all the time? <laughs> she had a fun life. Okay. <laughs> time specific. So, caso. Se caso. Se caso dos veces. Se caso dos veces. I tell how many times she got married. Okay. Uh, and they give a little analysis down here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they give a little why. Yeah. yeah. And that number five, first in Denmark, then in Spain, it, it is. It is that chain of events. It's sequence. They call that sequence of events. When you say, oh, first I did this and then I did that and then I did that, even though I know, you know, there's a separation in time. It's not quite as simple as I got up, I went to the bathroom, I walked into the kitchen. It's not that simple. First he lived in this place, then he lived in that place. It's still a sequence, okay? And we've got a primero, a first, and a después, a then. So, yeah, that's why that happens. Okay, uh, so they give you a little uh, example there. You can read that later. I want to come back to this word here, trabajaste, and I want to caution you a little bit. When you speak to uh, the guys who come to work in your house, when you get that that those little blips of practice, you know, with a native speaker, this word, trabajaste, is a word that a lot of native speakers, super fluent, say wrong. <laughs> they make a mistake with this verb. This is a verb. It's it's like the it's like the gonna <laughs> of Spanish. Yeah, I and and my my main grammatical error that I'm just prone to myself in English is gonna. Hey, where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? Ah, uh, what are you gonna do? Gonna, gonna, gonna. Gonna is very wrong. Going to, yeah? But I run that together. Okay, there are certain mistakes that native speakers of Spanish make grammatically uh, because they do. And this is one of them. You will hear a lot of people saying this verb as trabajaste, trabajaste, with an S at the end. Mm. It took me years to figure out why people do that. Literally, I'm not joking. It took me years, years, uh, until I was talking with somebody here, and they said, oh, I always do that, trabajaste, I always do that. I know it's wrong, but I say it because every other verb, every other to verb, if it's in presente, if it's in imperfecto, if it's in any of the other tenses, not preterite, 
has an S at the end. It has an S at the end. Oh. And because all the other tenses have an S at the end, native speakers, oh. even very well-educated people, you'll hear an S at the end that really shouldn't be there. Because that's what happens in every other tool verb. So when you think of it from that point of view, it's like, oh, that makes sense. It's the gonna. <laughs> it's the wanna. Hey, wanna go? Wrong. Not, you know, not correct, but we say it, right? Okay, well, Spanish has its forms of that. And, and that's the one, the two form. It's, it's their little glaring error that they make. Okay. Uh, yeah, and a lot of people do it. And I thought it was just a Mexican thing, but people have told me, no, actually, no, a lot of countries, Spanish native speakers do that. So apparently it is common. Okay, Abed, uh, I've got a longer practice, which I think I'm going to save for either the end of class or a different time. I want to take uh, more time to for you to actually work on things. So I'm going to go to our little pictures, las fotos. Um, are you okay with going off into some smaller groups to do that? See, coming up with some little examples. See, and I'll. I'll okay. Or do you want to do it as a big group? We like big group. Big group. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, me da igual, me da igual. It's all this, it gives me equal, meaning it's all the same to me. Me da igual. Okay. Uh, entonces, vamos a ver, vamos a ver aquí. We're going to take a look. We're going to pull these up on the screen, but we are going to look at these together. Todos juntos. And let's see what ideas we might come up with. I'm going to try to make these a little bit bigger. Oh, sí, es mucho mejor. Wow, that's a lot better. Okay. Bueno, a ver. Uh, si hablamos de los chicos en la fiesta, and remember, there are no right or wrong yeah, ways to talk about these. It depends on what you're expressing. Si queremos hablar de la foto de la fiesta de cumpleaños, Verdad? I've got an easy one. No, no. Oh. Oh. Go ahead, okay. Diane. No, uh, we we were on number five, I thought. Cinco. No, we're on number four. Cinco? Oh, perdón. Here? Aquí? We didn't do number four last time, I don't think. Oh, oh sí. we did? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. A ver. Perdón, perdón. Well, bien? here's bueno. my easy. Cuando era niña... Me encantaba las fiestas. Ah. When I was a girl, I loved parties. Cuando era niña, me encantaba. Me encantaban las fiestas. Me encantaban las fiestas. I used to love parties. What se encantaban? ¿Por qué encantaban? Oh, wouldn't it be encantaba, just me? No. no. Oh, interesante. Oh, es yeah. encantaban. Por qué se encantaban? Yeah, because las fiestas is plural. Yeah. Yeah. He, this verb encantar is one of the backwards me. verbs. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning, whatever comes at the end of a sentence determines what we do with that verb encantar. So okay. the encantar form does not depend on me. You're right. It, it would seem like it should, but it does not. Okay. And uh, a lot of people, uh, um, Mexicans who have, who conduct little classes, uh, practice classes with uh, U.S. students, they, they like to call these backwards verbs because backwards, the fiestas is what drives what I do with encantada. And word order, why right? that seems like so wrong, but it is so right. Cuando era niña, me encantaban las fiestas. When I was a kid, I used to love parties. But see, really, the problem, or I used to love, I used to love, right? Uh, uh, that word really means to enchant, to delight, yes. to give delight. <laughs> so that's why it's las fiestas. Okay. 
Buen ejemplo. Okay. Hay otro ejemplo. Any other example of how we might talk about that? La Los madre. Mm -hmm. oh. Perdón, Diana, why don't you take it? La madre invitó a los amigos uh, del niño a la fiesta. La madre invitó a los amigos uh, de su hijo. Del, ni I put del niño. Del niño. I, del niño. Del niño. A su fiesta. A su fiesta. Bien, bien. La madre invitó a los, a los amigos. Not she was inviting. Invitaba would, in a different sentence, maybe make sense. But here it doesn't make sense. We need invitó. Invitó. La madre invitó a los amigos. She invited her, the friends. But there we need pretérito because she did that at a point in time. And it's kind of over, yeah? Bien. Okay. Hay otro ejemplo. Los niños estaban cantando al niño a su fiesta de cumpleaños. Estaban cantando a, al niño en su fiesta de cumpleaños, ¿no? Uh, the kids were singing. Okay, now, the kids were singing, estaban cantando, is absolutely fine, absolutely okay, but we could also choose correctly to phrase that as cantaban. We could take estar out and say instead, uh, as a matter of fact, we'll put this with a slash here. Los niños estaban cantando o los niños cantaban. Mm -hmm. uh, they would both basically carry the same kind of meaning. But one uses only one verb, cantaban, they were singing, versus estaban cantando, you give it kind of a rolling feel of it was happening at the moment this picture was being taken. And that's okay too. Bien. Okay, what, about just, in, what about singing in, using such a resource? Los, los niños cantaron feliz cumpleaños a su amigo antes de, antes de el soplar las velas. Ah, los niños cantaron uh, feliz navidad. Oh, feliz, feliz navidad, no, feliz cumpleaños, <laughs> Dai, feliz cumpleaños. <laughs> Uh, feliz cumpleaños uh, uh, um, cuando, oh, otra vez, when he blew out the candles, oh, before he blew out the candles. Yeah. Before he blew out the candles? Uh, antes. Uh, antes de soplar uh, las velas o uh, las velitas, because they're little candles, yeah. Uh, antes de soplar. Um, if if you want to say before he blew out, oh, ouch, there's a, a speed bump we're going to have. <laughs> I'll show you what it would be, but it's complicated to explain. Um, so, okay, what I have written there is the workaround that is easy for you to figure out. Okay, that doesn't require hard stuff. Cantaron feliz cumpleaños antes de soplar las velas. Before blowing out the candles. That's what that means. Before blowing out the candles. Antes de gets that preposition de, so we need to use the infinitive. Mm. But if I want to conjugate that soplar, that, la acción de soplar es Soplar, okay? Soplar, blow. By the way, if you talk with your landscaper and you want your yard blown, that's the verb you use, see? <laughs> <laughs> the guys come over to my house. Ah, ¿Quieres que soplemos? You want us to blow the yard? Yeah. Uh, okay. A ver. Uh, but soplar es regular. It's a perfectly regular verb. But if I want to say the kids sang before 
he blew out the candles. Isn't that what we would probably normally say? Yeah. We need something special because antes de means before. And if they sang before he did something, That's that true. action happening after the word antes de has to go into something called past subjunctive. Oh, God, it's complicated. Oh. But here's how it would sound. Uh, cantaron, cantaron feliz cumpleaños antes de que uh, él soplara las velas. The soplara, what the heck is that? That is something called uh, imperfect subjunctive. Mm. There is a past subjunctive. And if I'm talking about actions in the past, anything combined with the phrase before means that this action of hadn't happened yet. This action was not yet part of reality because boom, saying, and antes de que, whenever we say before, whatever action comes after it technically had not yet happened. And anything that belongs to the realm of not reality belongs into what they call subjunctive. Only reason you have to worry about that is if you say before he, they did this before he did that. When I add a different human being and I've got antes de que, this que makes all the difference in the world. If I just say antes de, I can stick in an infinitive. Not a brain buster, but <laughs> if I say antes de, and I inject a different human being, right? Cantaron is talking about they, but him blowing out the candles is a different person. Now I need something called past subjunctive. That is sticky. So the workaround to avoid that is don't name the kid. <laughs> And just use antes de, and now all you need is an infinitive. More so, like before the candles were blown out. Before the candle. Yeah, it's kind, kind of, of like that. And that before, the word before automatically, automatically says that second activity has not yet happened. Okay. So that's something like future tense. That's the same endings as future tense well degree. kind of but the stress is different oh okay i don't want to open too big a can of worms <laughs> but i'm gonna do this just to show you why yeah it matters okay uh soplar soplar is to blow yeah uh, we could talk about the wind you could talk about the thing the landscaping guy uses to yeah the machine that he uses to blow leaves out of your yard whatever uh, or people blowing out a candle. That's all soplar. Uh, okay, so here's what happens. Future tense is built on the whole verb. We don't get rid of the AR. Right. So if I want to say, he will blow out the candles. Oh, I just lit them. Oh, he will blow out the candles. In conversation, most people will not use future tense. They'll just say, no. va a soplar. No. El niño va a soplar las velas. He's going to blow out the candles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Va a soplar. But if you use actual future tense, they keep soplar, the whole AR, and to talk about one guy doing it, oh, soplara. Uh, but notice how it's pronounced. Soplara. Soplara. Uh -huh. Yeah. Excellent. We punch Excellent. at the end. Soplara. Mm -hmm. I will blow out is soplare. Uh, we will blow out is soplaremos. Okay. Uh, they will blow out is soplaran. Okay. That's all futuro. Future. Future tense, oddly, 
or easily actually in Spanish, does not get rid of the AR, does not get rid of the ER, does not get rid of the IR, and you tag on an ending to say future. But future tense in everyday conversation is not as common in Latin America, I would say. Ir a infinitive is more common to talk about future. Future is, people know how to use it, they do use it, but it's kind of more formal. So you hear it maybe in a newscast, hmm. okay? So if they wanna say, uh, uh, um, uh, if they wanna say, uh, uh, the mayor will open the, the, the event, ah, he will open the fair, yeah? Uh, most people in conversation will say, Babrir. he's going to open. Gonna. <laughs> he's going to open. He's going to open. Yeah, that's the way more people in conversation will see it. But, uh, abrirá. if there's a newscast and the newscaster is standing there with the microphone and He's saying, oh, the mayor is here. He's going to open a fair. It's a little more formal presentation. So he might say, abrirá la, uh, el festival. Abrirá el festival. Okay. Uh, so in writing, in newspapers, in more formal speech, you will actually hear this future tense. But most people will keep it to Badir. Okay. Let's okay. go back to our soplar thing. Soplar, soplar. Uh, this shows you how goofy, goofy tenses can get. If I want to put, use something called past subjunctive, and after antes de que, and now I name a different person. Here I was talking about a group of kids, and now I've got antes de que. This uh, soplara is not pronounced the same way as soplara. Mm -hmm. The emphasis is different. Soplara, uh, so, uh, soplara is future. Soplara comes from past subjunctive. It is formed, ooh, actually, past subjunctive is formed on a verb form you know. It's based on preterite. And what happens is you take soplaron, the ellos form in preterite. You get rid of the ron and soplara becomes an el form. Uh, uh, soplaran becomes a they form. So it's a past subjunctive. It's kind of advanced. But notice there's a way, this sounds different, soplara. Soplara. The accent marks indicate a different tense. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't need to worry about that too much, but you do need to think about if you use an antes de phrase uh, for right now, keep it to antes de an infinitive for right now, because once you start using antes de que, it has to go into some kind of subjunctive. And that's um, kind of a, it, it is a big can of worms and something we'll do another time, but it takes a while. Okay. Spanish has three moods. Besides all those tenses, I can't, I, Besides all those tenses, it has three moods. And indicative, present tense falls into indicative, preterite tense falls into indicative, imperfecto falls into indicative. Indicative talks about what is really a part of reality. What really is happening, what really did happen, a description of what really was, what something really looked like, okay? But uh, another mood is subjunctive and that talks about doubt, emotion, 
imposing our wishes on somebody else. And English has almost nothing very satisfactory to compare that to. And then the third mood is imperative. When you give people orders, hey, do this, don't do that. Don't suck your thumb. <laughs> Pick up that piece of paper, take out the trash. Sweep the floor. Those are all imperative. But subjunctive talks about states of mm, the action isn't really happening yet. It may happen. It may not happen. You may want it to happen, but it's not happening yet. Okay. Let's look at the exercising people. ¿Qué podemos decir? What can we say about these folks? Oh, yeah. Quieren ir a clase de ejercicio todos los días. Okay. Querían? They wanted? Querían. Ir a Querían clase. ir a sus clases. Uh, de ejercicio uh, uh, todos los días. Bien. Vale. Excelente, sí. They wanted to go to exercise class every day. Bien. Ok. Le dos fueron al gimnasia el martes. Uh, la primera parte. The first part again. Le dos. Is that how I say the two? Le dos, los dos, los, los dos. dos fueron al gimnasia el martes. Fueron al gimnasio el martes. They went to the gym on Tuesday. And that's a one specific day. So preterito, right? But todos los días means I got to have something imperfecto yeah. there. Bien, bien. Buenos ejemplos. ¿Qué más? What else? Ellos el hicieron ejercicio en el gimnasio. Gim, gimnasio. Ok. Uh, did, you, uh, did you say uh, uh, hicieron? I said, uh, I probably picked the wrong one. Ellos, I said hicieron. Hicieron. Hicieron ejercicio. Uh, 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 hicieron ejercicio. They exercised, yeah. Uh, hacer is an odd verb. It's a very irregular verb. Hicieron. Uh, uh, it looks like, you know, you think hacer should have an H-A-C, but it doesn't. Hicieron. Hicieron ejercicio. Bien? Okay. Yeah, they exercised. Mm -hmm. um, el hombre montó su bicicleta más rápido que su esposo, esposa, esposa, mientras ella no estaba mirando. Wow! Uh, montó su bicicleta más, uh, más rápido, faster? Mm -hmm. Que su esposo. Que su esposa. Esposa, mientras ella no estaba mirando. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Competitive. Ah, <laughs> eran, eran personas muy, muy activas, sí, competitivas, sí. Uh, les gustaba competir. They liked competing. Uh, les gustaba competir. Bien. Ok, vale. Uh, bueno. Uh, Estaba... Otras fotos. Oh, perdón. Oh, uh, Estaban al gimnasio y ejercician, ejercician cuando las luces apagaron. Oh, cuando las luces apagaron, when the lights turned off, when the lights oh. shut off. Oh, ok. Sí. Sí. Ah, uh, uh, bien. Ah, uh, you do hear some people from some regions using ejercitarse, um, yeah, uh, it, but hacer ejercicio is kind of universally accepted thing for exercise, but that's kind of changing, I think, because the bleed over from English, you know, is a Spanglish thing, I think, but you do hear it sometimes. Okay, uh, vale, bueno, cuando apagaron, when the lights turned off, sí, uh, uh, bien, okay. Uh, vamos a pasar a otras fotos. Let's pick up 
pass on to some other activities here. But you'll notice like, you know, yeah, there are no right or wrong answers, right? We can twist these to inject different meanings in. And that's a whole reason, uh, you know, that's why it's important for you to practice these examples because it's good for you to see that depending on what your your own hidden meaning is that you wanna say, you morph these verbs into different forms to do that. Okay, hablando de, de lo, las bicicletas, de las ciclistas, mm -hmm. de, de los ciclistas. Hubo un accidente muy mal en la, mon en la montana. Hubo, hubo un, sí, un accidente, ah, muy, ah, accidente muy malo. Malo, ya. Yeah. Ah, sí, en el, um, en el parque, en el sendero, en el parque, on, yeah. the, on the trail, ya, yeah, lo que sea, wherever it is, sí. Hubo and there, uh, un evento, sí, hubo un accidente. We really uh -huh. can't say había un accidente because <laughs> that's an event. Yeah, that's one of the um, very distinct uses for hubo. Okay. Dos amigos estaban montando sus bicis en las montañas. De repente, un hombre copió una roca y se cayó. Ah, y se cayó, and he fell down. Se cayó is a little bit better than just cayó. Se, se cayó, cayó, he fell down, yeah. Caerse is to fall down. Uh, estaba montando uh, en bici uh, cuando, and then you've got uh, tripped or crashed or, yeah, something. That, okay, the cuando is going to introduce an event. Okay, uh, estropeyó, he crashed into. Uh, another a nice verb um, to use with this is chocar, chocó. Cuando uno, when one, cuando uno chocó con uh, uh, una piedra. Uh, Crash into a rock, yeah. Um, yeah. You can use the verb you use, but chocar is a nice short verb, yeah. And chocar is is chocar is this <laughs> chocar. Uh, so it's a verb that can come to your brain really fast because it's a short word, right? Chocar chocó con una piedra y se cayó y se cayó. And that just gets a little spelling change. Instead of an I-O with an accent, it gets a Y-O. That's because I've got three vowels together. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. To say, to say cayó in Spanish is considered like, why do I have three vowels together? They don't like that as a general rule. Uh, so because that I-O, uh, it, it kind of naturally slides into this kind of spelling, cayó. <laughs> cayó. Okay. Bien. This is similar, but el, el primero ciclista se cayó cuando el segundo comenzó su salto. Ah, comenzó su, sí, when the other guy started his jump. Bueno, sí, ah, 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 sí, eso me gusta. I like that a lot. Me gusta mucho. Okay. Ah, uh, el primero... Uh, se cayó uh, uh, y el segundo uh, uh, empezó uh, I need to... necesito en cortese uh, y el segundo empezó uh, su salto his jump or we could just shorten that to the second one jumped yeah Second one jumped, and saltar means to jump. So I can just say, cuando el segundo saltó. Saltó. Bien. Can, can you help with the maybe somewhat fine difference between using empezó or comenzó? Come, oh, no hay gran diferencia, not a big difference. Comenzó, 
Yeah, you could use comenzó, empezó, comenzó. There's not a big difference. There's synonyms. I think empezar is a little more common verb in everyday conversation. I think comenzar is a little more formal, maybe more writing, but I, you know, they're, they're synonyms. Both are understood. Both are totally okay to use. Empezó su salto, comenzó su salto. Or we can just take that verb saltar to jump and use salto. Boom. Yeah, see. Ellos estaban haciendo algo mucho peligroso. Ah, estaban haciendo algo muy peligroso. Muy. Están, sí. Estaban uh, haciendo algo muy uh, uh, peligroso. They were doing something very dangerous. Sí. <laughs> <laughs> o, o, o hacían. They were doing. Hacían algo. Just take the one verb, make it imperfecto, right? Hacían algo muy peligroso. Now, if I say that, somebody's going to expect me to start, continue describing. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, just by itself, by itself, they're going to expect, okay, and now you're going to tell me more of the story. But if I just say, uh, uh, hicieron algo muy uh, peligroso. Uh, they did something very dangerous. I'm putting an end to it, right? But if I have mm. hacían algo peligroso, probably somebody is going to expect you to say, mm, and, and what happened after? Cuando un hombre se cayó. Cuando un hombre se cayó. Sí, exacto. Exacto. Yeah. Uh, so ASEAN is going to imply, oh, there's something else. I'm I'm hanging on your every word. What comes afterwards? Eso es. That's exactly it. Okay. Fantástico. Uh, algo muy cotidiano. With this next picture is a more everyday kind of thing. Something that is happen happening to non-adventurous everyday kind of folk. <laughs> yeah. En, en el café de Starbucks o algo así. Okay. ¿Qué podemos decir? What can we say about these folks? La mujer dio el café al hombre cuando él le pagó su dinero. Ah, uh, la mujer uh, dio el café al, al hombre. hombre? Mm -hmm. Now, let's, let's think about that half. It's okay, but people are going to say, ooh, there's a little hangnail missing. Oh, you need... Because the, of this. The, the oh, one delay. has to be, have the indirect object. Keep up. Now, somebody would totally understand you. Okay. Oh, mujer. Oh, what, how did that happen? Got it. Uh, la mujer. La mujer. Le dio. La mujer le dio. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, oh. it's not wrong for you to say, la mujer dio el café al hombre. It's not wrong, but it sounds odd to not have that little word le. Okay. Okay. So, so then you would, would you need the word al uh, hombre? Do we need al hombre? Uh, Tecnicamente, because you have that picture, technically, no. Because you automatically see who, yeah? Uh, without a picture, without a, a photo, if I had no picture to look at, no visual, right. then you perhaps, yes. Okay. Okay, to clarify. Because I've got a picture, I can totally leave off al hombre. Boom. Mm -hmm. I can just toss it. Or I can put it in, see, sí, al hombre. It's not incorrect. It's redundant, but it's okay. Al hombre. Uh, and, I'm sorry, the second half here? And we could probably leave out L. I had L le pagó su dinero. 
Y él, y él, uh, sí, sí, le pagó, uh, uh, sí, le pagó, uh, you know, and probably just that, le pagó, he paid her. Okay. Sí. Uh, oh, you could say, le pagó con efectivo, he paid in cash, mm -hmm. he paid con tarjeta, he paid with a card, yeah. Something like that. Uh, le pagó por el café. He paid for the coffee because it's an exchange. Por, maybe, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. But after pago, you probably want to either mention what he paid for or how he paid it. Probably not dinero. Um, that's kind of understood. Right, but his method of payment is probably what people are really going to say: cash or card, cash or card, mm -hmm. yeah, cash or card. Mm -hmm. Which I know is money, but <laughs> so for the for the credit card, you don't have to say they they credit go. Uh, pues, just... okay. okay. Ah, es una posibilidad con tarjeta de. De débito con tarjeta de crédito, sí, okay. es posible. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people nowadays don't even look for whether it's uh, Got it. in practice. People usually don't even ask if it's credit or debit. They just take the card. They just ask con tarjeta. That, I mean, not to say that de crédito isn't good, but... Uh, uh, it is so universally accepted that it's a card now that people tend to just mention con tarjeta. That's good. Yeah. You know, maybe if it were a big purchase, like a huge amount of money, they might be yeah. asking if it's different. Maybe, maybe, quizás, maybe. But yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that, that card is becoming such a ubiquitous thing that uh, uh, people aren't even bothering a lot of times with debito or credito that's kind of going out the window now. It's all digital, good God. Uh, <laughs> okay, hay algo más. Is there something different you might say? I want to say la camarera. Okay. La camarera? La camarera sonrió al hombre cuando le sirvió un tazo de café. Sonrió, ah. She smiled. Cuando le dio su, su taza de café, when she gave him his cup of coffee. Bien! She smiled. Sonrió. Mm. Hombre. We might have Wait a le sonrió. We might have a le sonrió. Smiled at him. We might. See? Okay. I want to see if this article is correct. La barista... Siempre lo servió con una sonrisa. Served it? Sí. With a smile. Sí. Oh. Es, sí. The lo, es the lo, the lo is in the right. Ella place. lo sirvió. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at, there are two ways you might say this, and both are right, but they say different things. Uh, lo sirvió con una sonrisa. She, that served, an old it. she served it. And the lot is talking about? Café. 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 Mm -hmm. Lo sirvió con una sonrisa. She served it. You could say, le sirvió. Uh, she served him. Yeah. Le sirvió con una sonrisa. She served him with a smile. So, le sirvió would mean she served him. Lo sirvió would mean she served it. Los dos son posibles. The two are both equally good, equally uh, possible. Oh, maybe you want to say she served it to him. Oh. Mm. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. This one is hard. Say, the say person lo. is first. Ella se lo. Se lo sirvió. Yes. 
con oh, una that's right. son ah sirvió okay. con una sonrisa ah oh sirvió I got my okay. get, a, get my finger on that accent key right okay ah uh, ella se lo sirvió se lo sirvió and when I have the visual and I know what I'm talking about I can do that the lo the lo means I cannot make café redundant, redundant and, and name it, okay? The café needs to totally be bye-bye, gone, right? Mm -hmm. But the the le or the se could have, you know, al hombre, tagged down to the end. Se lo sirvió con una sonrisa. She served it to him with a smile. Ah, qué maravilloso. Sí, bien. Look at all those different things we can do with that. Okay. Wait, 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 go. wait. Luego le pidió a la barista por una cita. <laughs> ah, le pidió. Ah, ok. Oh, eso me gusta. Sí. Uh, <laughs> luego, later, sí. Uh, él le pidió una cita. We don't need a por. I know. Um, oh, ok. A la barista. Ah, uh, bien. Ok, <laughs> luego él le pidió una cita a la barista. He asked for a date. And I know normally it would be por because it's an exchange, yeah? But pedir is one of those special verbs that the ask for the for is built in. So we don't need the word for in this case. Okay. Ah, we don't need the for because that special for idea is built into the verb pedir. Yeah. Uh, sí, le pidió una cita. He asked right out on a date. Oh, smart man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Muy bien. Muy bien. Uh, Ustedes tienen buenas ideas. You guys have come up with some really nice creative stuff here. I like that. Me gusta mucho. Okay. A ver. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Vale, vale, vale. Uh, vamos a hablar de, de la foto que tiene las personas. Están, sí, están, mm, oh, son voluntarios. Con la foto de los voluntarios en el parque, ¿no? O al lado de, de la calle, al lado de la carretera, next to the highway in the park. I no, no sé dónde están. I don't know where they are. ¿Qué podemos decir? We les, know they're picking up trash, though. ¿Les gustaba ayudar a limpar el parque? ¿Les gustaba ayudar a, a, a limpiar? ¿Limpiar? A el limpiar parque? el parque. A limpiar, ayudar a, a sacar... Uh, Sa uy, sacar, uy, I can't add. sacar basura en el parque, ya yeah, lo que sea así, yeah, whatever it might be, sí, bien, sí, uh, bien, ok. La familia ayudó al media, this is hard, medio ambiente. Oh, uh, ayudó media. el medio ambiente. Uh, uh, medio ambiente es environment. Mientras recogía la basura. Recogía la basura, sí. While she was, she helped the environment while she was picking up that trash. Ah, bien. Sí. Uh, and that you could interpret as ayudaba or ayudó. You could do either one. Son correctos. Yeah. One would just say over with. One would say was helping. The two might be correct. Okay. Vale. Not as much to talk about it with that, really, I guess. I'm okay. I'm just hanging on by my fingernails, and my sentences are as simple as they can be. El grupo That's okay. Yeah. juntos. Okay, I'm sorry. Limpiaron? Is it? Yes, did I say it wrong? Let's see. Did I limp? 
Limpiaron is how I wrote it. Limpiaron. Limpiaron. We need that e e e sound because it's limpiar, like estudiar. Yeah, it's got okay. the i oh, hang on yeah. there. Limpiaron. Sí. Uh, limpiaron. Uh, uh, um, limpiaron en la calle. Limpiaron el parque. Limpiaron el sendero. Cleaned up the trail. Uh, sí. Okay. I'm not sure. Just tried to do a sentence right now. I'm not sure which verb form to use. If you la una mujer trajo una bolsa para la basura, or is it traía una bolsa para oh, la basura? Pues, mm, depende. If you want to say matter. was bringing traía. If you want to say brought, then trajo. Traer is a very odd, irregular one in preterito. It's very odd. Traer gets a J. Ooh. Uh, so I'll show you how that works. So if we're looking at this lady who is just like opening up the bag and she just brought it, uh, ella trajo uh, uh, una nueva... Uh, Una nueva bolsa. I, she brought a new bag because they filled up all the other ones. Okay. So she had to see. Uh, una bolsa. Una bolsa uh, vacía. She brought an empty bag. Mm. Ah. Sí. Ella trajo una bolsa vacía. Trajo with that J is the odd preterite for traer, T-R-A-E-R, traer, E, yeah. It's a very, very irregular preterite. But you could, but the, you could also say, a uh, acaba de traer, acaba de traer. Acaba, si, sí, acaba, acaba de traer. Una bolsa. Si, sí, acaba de traer, she just brought. Okay, so here is something recent. Acaba de traer una bolsa mm. vacía. She just brought an empty bag. Acaba de traer means she just did it. It's very recent. Bien. Sí. Está bien. It's good. Yeah. See, there are very few wrong answers because we mold our message out using uh, all these different tools that we've got. Uh, si queremos hablar del partido de voleibol. El partido de voleibol. Las amigas les gusta jugar a voleibol. A las amigas, a las amigas les gusta. Gusta. Gustaba. Gustaba. Sí. Uh, el voleibol o jugar al voleibol. Sí, el voleibol. Bien, sí. A las amigas. Oh, uh, voleibol. Got my accent the wrong one. Voleibol. Sí, bueno, Marcos. Las chicas jugaban voleibol en la playa. Jugaban al voleibol en la playa. En la playa, sí. Yeah, Sam, the beach volleyball. I, mine is pretty similar. I said, cuando era ju uh, joven, siempre jugamos volleyball en la playa. Sí, uh, cuando, uh, uh, cuando eran jóvenes, when they were young? When I was young. When oh, I when was I young. was young. Era. Cuando era joven. Cuando era joven. Sí. Uh, jugaba uh, al voleibol. Ok, bien, bien. Uh, no hay, oh, no hay ningún asiento. El okay. equipo ganaron, ganaron el partido. Ah, ah, ganaron. Ganaron el partido. They won the game. Sí. Sí, el, uh, el equipo con, con camisetas 
a, a blancas, blancas. Sí, el equipo con el, el equipo con camiseta a uh, camisetas uh, blancas uh, ganó el partido o ellos ganaron ellas es es un equipo de chicas a uh, ganaron el partido bien bien perfecto 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 me gusta okay I want to finish up this slot I'm watching our time here oh how timely people at voting <laughs> People at voting booths. So oh, and now our people are going to complain because those poor little machines just couldn't do the job last night. Oh. Oh. Mm -hmm. We're going to be hear about it from now till kingdom come. Good God. Okay. <laughs> Muchas personas votaron ayer. Sí, muchas personas. Oh, ayer? Muchas yes. personas. Yesterday. Uh, uh, votaron. Ayer, many people voted yesterday. Oh. Okay. Uh, bien. Uh, 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 los ciudadanos. The citizens. Los ciudadanos. And notice the word for citizen has ciudad, city in it. If you know the word city, ciudad, you can build the word citizen onto that. Ciudadanos. Mm. Los ciudadanos, uh, uh, leyeron, sí, uh, los documentos. Antes de votar, Before voting. <laughs> ah, antes de votar. Ah, bien, 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 bien. Ah, okay. Un ah. hombre terminó su nombre para votar. Ah, el, sí, un hombre ah, firmó su nombre ah, ah. Ah. para votar o para votar. votar. Para votar, para in votar. order to vote. Sí, para votar, para recibir, sí, uh, los papeles, sí, bien, sí, 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 me gusta, me gusta. Bueno. What, what, is, what is firmo? Signed, he signed, signed, signed his name. Fie, sí, firmar, a uh, firmar es to sign. Okay. To write your name down, yeah, firmar. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, when you get, uh, oh, actually notice next time you get a write-in ballot. You know, a lot of times you see, see something that says, firme aquí, firme aquí. Because they have to print things in Spanish and in English, yeah. Firme aquí is sign here. <laughs> firme aquí, because they have to be polite. Firme aquí, sign here. Uh, firme aquí, that's a command, sign here. Uh, okay. A ver. Las, uh, perso las personas escribieron sus opciones para los candida candidatos. Escribieron, uh, oh, escribieron uh, los nombres, the names? Uh, I said sus opciones, which is like oh, choice. Oh, sus opciones. Oh, sí, sí, sí. Okay. Sus opciones. Para, para is it para? Para los candidato, candidatos, candidatos. Ah, para los candidatos. Ah, ah. Ah, sí. Ok, sí. Ah, ah, uh, ah. Uh, de los candidatos. Actually, we would oh. use de. That's why I was having a blip. Ok. Ah, algo interesante. Some in, something interesting. Related to this, see, ¿sí? una una idea relacionada con este esta idea de votar. Ah, uh, en español, uh, when you vote for someone, it's expressed as ah uh, votamos por ah oh, and yeah. nombre, okay. So ah uh, people would say votamos por Lake, votamos por Hobbs, votamos por, yeah, fill in the name, yeah. 
when you vote for a candidate, it's always votar por, okay? And the reason is that you're doing it on behalf of, for the benefit of this person. And uh, yeah, or you can think of it maybe as, oh, in exchange for, I don't know. But anyway, it's <laughs> always votar por, it's always por. Uh, you vote on behalf of a particular candidate. That's technically the reason. But if you just memorize it as votar por, and then you put the name of your candidate or your party, whichever you prefer, that's what you do. Okay. A ver. Ooh. Podemos hablar de este hombre. Can we talk about this guy? <laughs> this is one of my favorite guys because this is not a job I can do. <laughs> I got a favorite plumber. And that guy, man, I would, I would bake him. I, I have baked him cookies at times. Yes. Because <laughs> uh, usually when I call him, I am desperate. Okay. <laughs> Estoy desesperada. I am desperate when I'm calling that guy. Uh, ¿Qué podemos hacer, decir? What can we say? I said, se lastimaba que no llamó un, and I couldn't find plumber, thinking that it was the homeowner trying to fix his sink. Oh, that it was the, the homeowner. Mm -hmm. que, que no es la persona de la profesión, ¿sí? Uh, okay. A ver, bien. Uh, bueno, okay. Um, plumber. There are a couple of ways and it really, I'm, I'm looking up only because I'm trying to see if there's a one that, there is one that's more common in Spain versus Latin America. Um, okay, you can just use plomero. Uh, plomero works for, uh, uh, but you wanna say it was a shame? I wanted to say, yes, se lastimaba que no llamó un plomero. Ah. He was sorry he didn't. Call it plumber. Uh, ooh, uh, uh, what, a sh what a shame, right? Yes. Que, ooh, okay, entonces, que lastima, what a shame. Okay. Que no llamó al plomero. Uh, in Spain, they kind of <laughs> do tend to, uh, fontanero, yeah, I had to look that up because I, I don't hear it as much, because I but I knew there were two. Um, plomero, fontanero is another one, but I think that's more used in Spain. Fontanero, which kind of makes sense, but plomero is what I am used to here. Que lastima que no llamó al plomero. What a shame he didn't call the plumber. And now we, ah, tiene que uh, uh, reparar todo sí, uh, uh, por sí mismo. I am so por sí mismo by himself, <laughs> on his own. Uh, okay. Bueno, ¿qué más? El plomero reparó, reparó el fregadero. Excelente. El plomero, sí, uh, reparó uh, el fregadero, the uh, sink, yeah, the sink. Los tubos, yeah. pipes, yeah. Sí, el fregadero, sí. Reparó. Sometimes you hear arregló. Arreglar is to arrange. Also can be used for fix, but reparar, repair, fix. Sí. Uh, uh, los dos son casi iguales. Those two are almost equally the same. Reparó es fantástico. Okay. Una pregunta. Sí, dime. Uh, el fregadero rompió ayer o se rompió? Do you say it broke itself or it broke? Oh, mm. it broke. Ah, uh, ah, sí. Se rompió or, or just rompió? Ah, uh, rompió. Hmm, rompió. Tengo que pensar un poquito. Se rompió, uh, se rompió, I think is a little more common. Se rompió. So it, it, just it, breaks, it, broke. it breaks itself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, if, if you're talking about a car, 
or maybe a fridge, something with big and lots of moving parts, a piece of machinery, yeah? Um, you'll tend to hear a word that is descomponer, which literally is like decompose. It breaks down. Descomponer is to break down and it's built on poner and poner is very irregular. So se me descompuso is the way of saying it went and broke itself down on me. Se me descompuso, it broke itself, it broke down on me, right? But for something as simple as a sink, yeah, you know, for a fridge, se me descompuso, for a car, for sure, se me descompuso, it broke down on me. But something simple like a sink, such as se rompió, probably works just as well. Yeah. Okay. okay, vale. Bueno, okay. I want to show you a little page. Um, I'm going to have you try. Oh, es difícil. This one's kind of hard. This one's kind of hard. Uh, but it's going to talk about some of these verbs that are difficult for us because mm. they mean one thing in preterito, but they really have a different meaning in imperfecto. So they show you in this nice chart uh, what how the meaning changes from poder imperfecto into poder preterito. Querer in imperfecto to querer preterito. Conocer imperfecto to conocer preterito. And this conocer one, I would say, is quite important. This is something that in speaking, you may get Equal time, either the preterite side or the imperfect side. Saber, how the meaning changes from imperfecto into preterito. So this is a little thing that uh, uh, works on that. But here's what I want to show you before. Because we don't want you at guessing, well, what do they mean? It's important to read the bottom half with all the blue first. Because what you're going to do is read it in English first at the bottom. And so that first sentence, don't interpret it as, I didn't find out. We want you, here, here, this is the interpretation. So the interpretation you want in English is below. So take it sentence by sentence and just tackle, I didn't know anything. And now when you see saber, you know you need to pick saber to mean I didn't know, mm. right? One form sabia will mean I didn't know. One form supe will mean found out. So you have to read the interpretation below first. And again, then understand? See. Yep. See. Yeah. Okay. If you don't read that bottom half, it'll be tough for you to figure out the top half. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and when you get to this little name, Google Botero and look at a couple pictures and it will make you chuckle. See. See, see, see. It will no. make you chuckle. Yeah. That is a specific, uh, it's a painter. Yeah. Uh, does he do sculpting? I think he also did some sculpture. Mm -hmm. As a very specific painter, but when you look at Botero's work, you'll go, ha, 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 ha. Uh, you'll do yourself a favor. So I'm going to give you that, and I'm going to give you a story. Um, I'm going to give you a story. Ooh, ooh, I was going to give you a story, but actually we didn't get time to get into the long one. I may be reserving it. Okay, I'll give you a past story so that you get just some listening comprehension with just listening and not a written thing. Make sense, see? Sí, sí, sí. Entienden? Bien. Excelente. Entonces, sí. Eso es todo. Uh, I have a little thing. Uh, ooh, next week, we're going to go through for a very connected story that I think I want to play during class. And it's actually kind of long. We're only going to play a part of it. And then I will uh, kind of preview. You'll break it down into parts. 
later on for homework. So, okay. ¿Todo bien? ¿All good? Yeah. Sí. Gracias. Excelente. Gracias. No sé, quizás, quizás es posible que llueva. Wow. Possible it may rain. Sí. sí. Ahora sí. está nublado. Esta sí. mañana, sí. Esta mañana hacía sol, hacía mucho sol. Ahora, sí. No, ahora no tanto. Bien. Ok. Entonces, sí. Nos vemos. Gracias. Que tengan buena semana. Have a good week.